Hi, this is an attempt to catch up on my monthly update that I wanted to, well, I attempted to do regular monthly updates on my orchids, but um, I missed May, so this is the June one. And I'm starting with Tink, and they're my Phalaenopsis. And look, there's one in blue right there, and it smells nice. And the rest are trying to grow new leaves. So that's my LD Bear Queen. This is Gigantia, Phalaenopsis Gigantia, who never does really good for me. And um, that's the new Tanshin Fly Eagle. It's a growing new leaf and it also activated the spike. So I think there might be a, a flower coming soon. So that's the new plant that I just got from Crystal Star Nursery. It was on my wish list for a while. And so maybe we'll see the bloom soon. And that's another uh, fragrant fall growing new leaf. And um, the spike is active, so there might be the bud coming soon. So phalaenopsis are active now. They're growing, they're doing stuff. That's good. This is my Catacetum Peliatum Jumbo Green Gold, who didn't have a rest because it was blooming up until spring. But now I think it might actually go into normal schedule because now it's a normal time to grow new growth. So see, look, these little tiny fresh roots, they're so cute. And um, I find that catacetums really appreciate my tank. They grow really fast here and they look healthy. Well, because it's warm and humid and lots of light. So I'm, I'm intend to keep catacetums here inside of tank. Now going further is my Cattleya Ludimaniana, Ludimaniana, and this is the only one Cattleya that I keep here, potted Cattleya that I keep here, because I read that it's um, one of the Cattleyas that prefers uh, warm conditions. It, uh, it grows at the sea level, so it doesn't like too cold, it might die actually when it's too cold, so I decided to keep it here in a tank right under the lights. It needs lots of sun, so it's very close to uh, it's very close to the lights. And there are two new growths coming on both sides. It grows on, on two sides. I bought it from Equa Genera last fall and so it had two new bulbs, but uh, they never bloomed for me. So I'm actually counting on the two new growths that uh, maybe will bloom. Maybe not, I don't know. I'm, I'm not good with Cattleyas. We'll see. But um, so this one will stay in a tank all through the winter. Unless uh, you know something that, uh, that I shouldn't keep it in a tank. But from what I read, this one is, uh, should be good in a tank. Then uh, moving farther, there's Angricum didieri, which I'm uh, just growing. It's a keiki that Rascapsol gave me, and it's growing well. And here is Saffronitis cernua that uh, I managed to rot two bulbs. Like you see the empty space here before before the new one. Yeah, here were two two more bulbs. I managed to rope them. This dim tank is good for some orchids, but if you make a little mistake, it can cost the life to to another orchid. So I hope it will recover. It should because there are still some bulbs at the bottom. But I think this new one was not fully grown when when this two disappeared. So I don't know if. Uh, if this one will survive or not, but I'm hoping that this 
older ones will produce more growth. So that's a, that's a bad thing that happened here. And then the last one on this shelf is my Dendrobium Jenkinsy, which is very actively growing right now. It's producing lots of new bulbs that are nice and green. I move my Dendrobiums inside of tank so they can enjoy hot and humid conditions here to promote great growth. But then for winter, they will go on cold window seal. So that's Jenkins C is actively growing. Now moving to the right side on the shelf. This is my Dendrobium Lodigazii, <clears throat> which also actively growing right now. It's lots of new growth and uh, lots of new leaves. So I'm happy with this. Again, for the winter time, it will go to cold windowsill where my wandas are. And uh, hopefully it will promote the blooming. Uh, this is my Dendrobium scabrilingui, who luckily for me produced this new growth, which is developing well. I'm happy about it. It's very nice. At my Balbophyllum macranto, macranta. Uh, it never bloomed. <coughs> Sorry, it never bloomed for me because I think it, it always was a seedling. So we'll see. It still needs to grow, but it's growing well here. There's a new growth there. Um, again, this is warm growing uh, Balbophyllum. That's why it's in the tank doesn't need uh, cold, it likes to be warm. And um, there is my Dendrobium senile, who is also blooming, uh, sorry, growing well. Now it's, a, it's growing season. It bloomed for me this spring, so I'm hoping it will create new growth or more blooms next year. Now there in the corner, there is my Phalaenopsis ambonensis, who activated the old spike and also is growing new spike. So there will be a plenty of blooms coming soon. There's some more fowls there and in the corner. It's um, awkward to get there, but there's my Belina who is growing new spike right now. And That's my Giovannica, who is still in bloom. It's blooming and blooming and blooming. And here is my Catacetum cross that I got from Gabrielle. And uh, remember, she gave me these two little bulbs. Now it started to grow this huge bulb. And look here. There's something there started at the base, which I cannot focus on there. And I don't know what it is. Is it flower spike or new bulb? I don't know. We'll see, but it's very exciting. It looks too early for the spike because bulb is not fully grown yet. But I don't know the rules for this uh, growth. But anyways, I will be happy to any to new growth or the spike. It's all very exciting for me to think from these two little bulbs, this huge growth appeared in like less than a year. That's amazing. Now what's going on at the bottom? In the corners I have hoyas, so we are ignoring them today. There um, at the back, <coughs> I put large phalaenopsis. And finally, my mock to you started to grow new leaf. It was sitting there doing nothing, but now it's growing, which is a good sign. I like it. Now there is my Lipanthus cross from Rascatsal, who is uh, always in bloom too. It does not grow too large because new leaves are growing, but then I lose some. 
I think like this this leaf is gonna go soon. So I don't know why. Maybe it's too too wet, too humid, and they just um, I don't know why it happens, but it grows new leaves all the time. It blooms all the time, but it also loses one two leaves every now and then. Maybe that's the process they they do. I don't know, but it looks nice and healthy. Now that's my Frangipedium grande, and it's growing new growth right there, and it's doing well, I think. In a thing. Now here are my slippers. That's a stony at the back. Yangji hawk here. Those are multiflorals. They all grow in new leaf. This is my Henryanum, Buffypedum Henryanum, who's growing new leaf and a new, whole new fan on the side. See? That one just started recently. I'm happy about it. And here is the bud that I'm really excited about. And it's progressing so slow, but this is Gendrobium tobiensis. And I think there are two buds growing. But one is bigger. Can you see it? There are like two buds. One is bigger, one is smaller. So I don't know if it will be able to handle two buds at a time, but I hope at least one will bloom. But it's been so slow developing, like it's really testing my patience. I'm uh, I'm excited about it because I bought this plant as a, as a seedling. There are only this one, two, three, this little growth here. And so it grew me that huge bulb. And now there are buds. And there's one more growth here, growing here. So I think... Um, it likes it in a thing. It does not need winter rest or anything or blooming. It's just like hibiki. It sits in a warm thing. I get it watered when dry. And uh, it blooms without any special demands. Or at least it, it buds. I don't know if it will bloom. Hmm? Now here on the back is my uh, Pragmipedium Osner Super Grande Trailing Chocolates. I like the name, that's why I bought it, Trailing Chocolates. I'm assuming that it will be brown long petals. It's one of those long petaled ones. I just received it recently in the spring from Orchids in Art Tropics and it's adjusting well. It's growing lots of new roots, I can see them. I put it, my friend, there's no focus. I put it my fragmipediums in those glass, they're beer glasses, I think. But I created a hole at the bottom because I wanted tall pots, but that are also see-through. And I couldn't find plastic ones like that because tall cymbidium pots are usually black or they're never see-through. So that was another option that I've created. So there is a hole at the bottom and then I put a little mesh pot upside down to create kind of like air cone inside. So there's lots of air circulation at the bottom. And it seems like uh, all my frogs are, are potted like that. It seems they like it. And there's my Restrepia striata, which grew into a nice and bushy plant. And it started blooming. I will make a video separately about it when more blooms open. It's really nice planting. So I'll show you closer what it looks like when it's blooming. It's a very cheerful plant. And on the right is my Fragmipedium kawakii, which is still hanging there. It didn't die as expected. So um, there's even new growth is growing. Um, I don't know. I, I treat it as all my other uh, Fragmipediums and it seems to like the tink and um, I water them with um, rainwater and I put a few pellets of slow-release fertilizing, fertilizer 
in the pots. That's all the third day getting out. Rainwater and few pellets of slow release fertilizer. And they're they're doing okay, I think, the fronts. And moving further is my I think this is my favorite phalaenopsis, Kingfisher's Dragon Wing. It's uh, in bloom for, in bloom for second month now because it's kind of like sequential. The buds appear. It keeps the spike and buds appear one after another. So there's another bud is growing on that spike. So there will be more blooms on it. I really like it. If you can get it, just get it. Kingfisher's dragon wing. Looks awesome. It smells nice and it blooms for a long time. Now here in front of the Phalaenopsis I have a couple of slippers, puffy petals. This is Emersonii and this is Sanderianum. Both of them are doing great. They're growing new leaves. They're still seedlings, I think. But um, for a change, I'm having some somewhat success with Paphia Pedlums, which really encourages me. I already bought, I wanted to start with just a couple, but uh, without even noticing, I collected like about eight of them already. And thankfully they are all growing, so maybe I will see some blooms sometime in the future. Now this is my hibiki, everybody knows it. It blooms and it grows. There, uh, this is a big cane and then there is a start of yet another cane. That's a great plan for my thing. Until it grows too big to fit here, I think. And this is Pathiopedion lowii that I just bought recently from Tropical Gardens. Uh, both, remember it was all crooked, now it's straightened. And um, there's a new leaf growing. So I think it's adjusting well. Um, for Pathiopedion lowii I was expecting like leaves wide, just as on this multifloral. But this plant has pretty narrow leaves. I don't know, maybe it's just a seedling and they will widen out, probably. So we'll see. And uh, what's left are my Vanda seedlings. I have a row of Vanda seedlings here. This is... Uh, now let me remember, I need to put tags, Jesus. So this is the Insignis. This is... Brunea Huancho. This is Lozonica. This this one is growing well. It's more like adolescent than ceiling now. Lozonica. This one is Vanda Foetida. This one is Vanda or Trudelia Pumila ceiling. And there is a second ceiling of Vanda Brunea Guancho. So sorry, I flask myself. I bought flask from Hengdon, the Mountain Labs, when they were visiting, and so I kept two ceilings for myself because they do take lots of space. Found the ceilings, I didn't want too many. I gave away, and I lost some, and I gave away some. Uh, so those are one the ceilings I have here, and uh, they're growing well in the tank, but I have a problem with lots of algae on the roots. See, all the roots are yucky green, and I don't know how to clean them up because of wet and uh, warm and light. Algae grows on them. So if anybody has suggestion on how to clean the roots of the Vanda seedlings from algae, let me know. I don't want, I, I, I don't want to kill them too. With my, maybe algae is not as bad for them as my clean. So I didn't ever touch them, but looking at them, it's kind of like, I don't like it. I would rather to have clean roots. So this was a quick run through my orchid tank to see who is in there and what they're doing. I still have some room on the top shelves here, which are reserved for 
some more plants that I will be getting. I should get Sologeny from Rask itself. She thinks that uh, her Sologeny would appreciate more humid environment that she, than she can provide. So I'm planning to keep it here on the top shelf. And I also ordered um, two uh, Kaisis or Hisis, I don't know how to correctly say it, Kaisis probably, plants that um, are near blooming size. So I'll see if they like it here. Maybe I will keep them here too. And um, yeah, so that was update on my orchids in a tank.